Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me for this podcast episode as we take a look at your natal Mercury sign and how you can energetically balance your brain. And I'm going to share with you examples of this for each of the 12 astrological signs. And we're going to look at how you can work with an energy that perhaps you weren't aware of that is able to assist you. And that energy is through the opposite sign of your Mercury. So for example, if your Mercury is in Cancer, the opposite of Cancer is Capricorn. And we'll talk about what the higher octaves of Capricorn can do to support your Mercury in Cancer. That's just one example. I'll be going through all 12 astrological signs, all 12 Mercury energies, and we're particularly looking at the lower octaves of the Mercury sign. This is when you're having a hard time. You're feeling overwhelmed. Your mind is heavy. You feel stressed out. There's anxiety. There's a need to solve something or figure it out now. Anything that shows up for us that really keeps in energy and information trapped in our brains. That's when we need support the most. That's when we need the most help. So we're going to look at the lower expressions of these Mercury signs. There is a spectrum of energy for every astrological sign. There is the highest expression and the lower expressions. You can also say the higher consciousness and the lower consciousness. And we're going to look at what's happening when your Mercury is experiencing its lower consciousness and how the higher consciousness of the opposite astrological sign is here to assist you. And you could also have a visual of your brain being balanced in this way, where the energies are then open, opening and flowing between the signs and this is how you can move to new solutions, new perspectives, higher awareness, and a deeper understanding of what is possible for you to perceive that perhaps you did not perceive originally. Mercury is the energy of our mind. It's how we communicate and speak. It's how we think, our perceptions, what we perceive. It is the energy of how we learn and how we share. Mercury is very active and it has many other symbolisms and themes in a chart as well. For example, it's connected to our everyday travel, our errands, our siblings, our early childhood learning experiences, our communications. But in this episode, we're really focusing on our minds and how we think, speak, communicate, and process within yourself. So that's what I'm focusing on here just to make that clear because every planet is connected to multiple themes and experiences in our lives. This is a way to really focus in on what we can do individually to support ourselves and to change around anything that might be stuck, stagnant, or incredibly stressful. A few things I want to mention before I go into the 12 astrological signs. The first is that Mercury retrograde in your chart means that you need to sit with information more. You need to take it in and be with it, review it before you take action out in the world or before you express it, before you put it out there. So understand that a retrograde planet, especially Mercury, is all about harnessing the energy internally first before it is externally expressed. And it's more of a one, two step process. So if you have Mercury retrograde natally in your chart, you're just someone who needs more time with information to understand it, to contemplate it, to sit with it, and to review before you talk about it or share. Another factor is that if in your chart, you have a planet that opposes your Mercury. So you have Mercury in Cancer, and then let's say you have the moon in Capricorn opposing your Mercury. And by opposition, I mean this can just be in the opposite astrological sign. It doesn't mean it has to be an exact opposition by degrees, but that planet can then help balance 
that Mercury energy. And so you innately have that. So you could have an opposite planet uh, that is already active in your life or in your world. And so you're already familiar with those energies. So for example, that moon in Capricorn might already understand what is necessary to balance out the energies of Mercury and Cancer. And then another thing to note is how this is actually connected to a type of harmony that we don't always see at first. And the harmony is because all of the elements in the zodiac are working together through a very interesting synthesis. And when you have any planet in a water sign, the opposite is always an earth sign. So if your Mercury is in Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, the opposite sign is in the element of Earth, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And this is the energy of support and clarity. And the Earth signs then support and help you get clear on what you're feeling, what you're sensing, what you're moving through, and give you a type of grounding. Then, of course, the opposite is true, where if you have Mercury in an Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, the opposite energy is in the water element, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, and the water element supports the Earth by letting things flow, by letting there be movement, by trusting a process and being okay with how things can move ahead even when you can't see them. The fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, are always opposed by the air signs of Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And the air signs bring in the ideas for those fire signs. The air signs support talking it out, sharing something, being clearer on the specifics before taking action. And then the opposite is true, where the Air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, are energized by the fire signs that support it with taking those ideas and putting things into action, getting it out of your head, moving it through, not being stuck in the ideas, and also not simply talking about it, but doing something about it. So there is a harmony here between the elements where they are opposing each other, but that's meant to bring in the balance. That's meant to bring in something to work with that is ultimately supportive. This harmony can also be seen in how we balance our brains and how we have the left side and the right side of our brains and how these are associated with different parts of our personality, with our needs, our process, what we perceive, etc. But when we work with both of them, when we harmonize them or intentionally are aware of them, we open up to even more than we would have known or experienced simply by relying on one side of the brain. So I hope all of this paints a clearer picture and how you can work with your natal mercury and how you can focus on what you're ready to develop next. And what I also love about this topic is how quite timely it is with our current North Node in Gemini. Because as I do this show on August 31st, 2020, the North Node in Gemini is ruled by Mercury, which is staying curious, staying open, talking things out, being willing to see it differently, to think differently, to challenge our opinions, or to look at what we have assumed that perhaps we're ready to get some new information on. So that's quite cool how it lines up. And for those of you who listen to this podcast regularly, uh, this topic came about because of the show I did for you on that cosmic intuitive astrology where I was channeling energies and this is one of the messages that came through for us to understand and to work with. If you want to hear that show, it aired on August 24th, 2020, if you want to listen to that podcast episode. So again, I'm going to be talking about the lower octave expressions of the Mercury signs and how the higher octave of the opposite sign can support it and balance it. So let's get started here. 
by talking about Mercury in Aries. So when Mercury in Aries is having a bad day, is stressed out, is in a mood, it can feel explosive, it can feel angry or frustrated, it can feel very impatient or impulsive. And typically that Mercury in Aries wants information now. It is a fast speaker, a fast talker, and it wants to understand what's happening. It wants to see progress. It wants things to move along quickly. There can also be a focus on self, on how this affects me, how this is good for me, what I want. And what we want to do with that energy is stretch it out into the Libra expressions. And the Libra energy is about taking a step back and being objective, where you get out of your own world, your own process, your own thoughts, and you look at something that maybe you didn't see before in terms of other people's needs, relationships, uh, what someone else might be thinking, what someone else might be needing. Mercury and Aries can be a self-involved talker and not listen to other people or not engage them in a conversation. This doesn't mean it's intentional. It just can be a very unconscious thing that when you stop and see it in yourself, maybe what you need to do is have a good conversation with a friend and understand their perspective, get out of your own head so that you can see maybe something that doesn't come to mind right away. For example, uh, there are other ways of perceiving a situation, a relationship, an experience that maybe will come up for you when you go to speak with someone else. And that, of course, is the Libra energy of sharing, conversation. A Libra energy will say to you, well, you know, the other way to look at it is this, or I don't think it's about you at all because that Mercury in Aries can be very self-involved and not open up to the bigger world or to see another perspective or another opinion. So the Libra energy will remind you It's not only about what you think or what is happening in your world. Think of it in a bigger objective viewpoint. Be an observer of yourself. Be an observer of your own reality. Look at where that anger is coming from or that reaction, that frustration, that impatience. And allow things to play out. Give it time. Give it motion, but also be willing to talk it out. So this is one of the gifts of the air signs is that they want to listen and they also want to share. And that can be very beneficial for that Mercury in Aries, especially when you want it now. And so the Libra can also help you with a timeline of, well, it might not happen today, but it could still happen in a month or next year. Again, that objective perspective is very balancing for that impatience of Mercury in Aries. Also, the Mercury in Aries can speak too fast and regret it later. So you want to give yourself breathing room before speaking uh, because the words that come out, if they're too intense, too in the moment, they can be very sharp and that isn't always your intention. So that Mercury in Aries is learning how to allow time to take some breathing space and to not always act or be in the moment. Mercury in Taurus, this is an earth sign. And this is the energy of needing and wanting to be very self-reliant. And the Taurus energy does well on its own. It can be independent and self-sufficient and how it wants to move about its day or move about its projects, move about its energies. And there can be this really amazing determination. But what happens is that that Mercury in Taurus can also get very hard on itself when it can't figure something out or when it's starting to feel a heaviness and it's looking for a solution or looking for something that will verify what the right next step is, what the right possibility is, what it should do next. Mercury in Taurus is very focused on what it sees 
what's happening in the physical world and basically the reality checks of life. And this is true for every earth sign, is that they are gifted with understanding the practical realities of their world. And so this can also bring up stress around money, around finances, around anything related to money and finances, uh, because there is a need for security with that Mercury and Taurus. And how can I be secure? How can I make the next best steps or go forward with something and make sure I see it in a very practical way. Mercury in Taurus is known for being an, an observer, for watching, uh, for perhaps being uh, watching from a distance, but taking in information, looking at what can be verified. And so there can be that heaviness and that weight of the world in the brain of solving financial problems or solving uh, something that comes up and not knowing what the next step is, not wanting to take a big risk, not wanting to move too fast, but perhaps feeling like I need to solve this myself. I need to find the solution on my own. Uh, there's that saying that no man is an island and sometimes Taurus can be an island and the brain can be its own island where you're really trying to figure out something that is coming up and you want to have a very clear result or tangible evidence support those next steps. So I, I get the sense here that if the focus is on the island, it's important to look at the water all around the island and the opposite sign of Taurus is Scorpio, a water sign, and how the water signs, especially Scorpio, are meant to show you something deeper under the surface. It's meant to tap you into how you really feel that it's okay to trust these parts of yourself. The Scorpio energy is about the transformation and trust, trusting what you can't see, but trusting what you feel. And so that Taurus energy needs to take a step back from its earthly reality at times and go into its feelings, go into what is unconsciously driving a fear, where does that fear stem from? Where have you experienced this similar theme earlier in your life, perhaps? And it's about going deeper because Taurus is about the earth and Scorpio is about what's under the earth, what's under the surface. And when you go into those parts of yourself, you start to see more and you can feel a relief because this is also where other people can show up to support you. And Scorpio is about sharing, sharing with people you trust. And so whenever there is too much on the mind of Taurus, it is important to open up to a trusted individual and talk it out in a way that taps you into an unconscious fear, limitation, or survival mechanism. And that Scorpio energy can then bring in additional resources, additional support systems, additional ways to move through a worry or a stress. Mercury in Gemini is associated with a very busy mind and having a lot going on. It is the multitasker. Uh, it is the energy of so many ideas, so many projects, so much to say, so much to do. And this creates anxiety and overwhelm. This creates a sense of not being able to focus, not being able to get anything going because you're moved on to the next thing. It's sort of that energy of starting a lot of things, balancing or juggling a lot of plates and feeling overwhelmed and worried about all of those plates crashing down. And so the opposite energy of Gemini is Sagittarius, which helps you take a higher viewpoint of your priorities. And that Sagittarius energy is where you take a step back and you start to breathe deeper and you look at where you're going. And when you understand more of where you're going, you can tap into what the current priorities are today. You don't have to do everything. You don't have to feel scattered or overwhelmed by everything that needs to get done. That Mercury in Gemini wants to have a destination, wants to know what it's putting energy towards and what it's really moving towards. And Sagittarius can provide that understanding. 
Sagittarius is also about stepping out of the mind, getting into movement so that your mind isn't overloaded with too much energy or information. And so this is where that Mercury and Gemini can go into some kind of physical movement, do something active to move the energy and to get basically fresh air coming into the body, coming into the lungs. That will really help the Mercury and Gemini energy stay fresh, stay strong, and not feel like it's essentially stuck in expired air, expired energies. So the Mercury and Gemini, being a fast thinker, a fast mover, needs to step out of its own mind and take a break and prioritize, look at what matters for the journey ahead, And then allow that guidance to help you prioritize what is in front of you right now. It's important to talk it out and then look at where you energetically respond to something. Because that's also a gift of Sagittarius. Sagittarius will say, yes, let's go for it. I want to do it. That's right for me. That is correct for me. So instead of looking at everything in front of you and thinking you have to do all 17 things, this is a time to assess What is energetically correct for you? Where are you genuinely excited about something? And how can you tap into that and use that as part of your motivation and as part of what you want to focus on next? Mercury and Cancer is the energy of speaking, feeling, communicating, and interpreting information with a more feeling nature, an intuitive lens. You're tapped into how something makes you feel and that could be your response. That could be where you are at times and it could also make you moody. You could feel emotional or defensive. That mercury in cancer wants time to process. It wants time to be in its own world and think about what you're going to say or how you should say it or what feels right. So there can be a lot that goes into the mind's functions around how you're really feeling about something. And in the lower octaves, this is where you want to be aware of how you communicate, how you share with people, and also just giving yourself downtime, giving yourself that space. And so the opposite sign of Capricorn can assist you by providing you with clarity And that Capricorn energy is asking you to take emotion out of it, to step back and look at some of more the concrete facts, the specific details that matter, and what is an overall objective that you want to reach and to allow that to support you, where instead of going into how it makes you feel, Capricorn is saying, but where are you going? Does this serve you? Is this truly what is appropriate for you right now? And if so, let's make a plan of action. Let's put together something strong, clear, and firm that you can trust and you can rely on. Because that Mercury in Cancer can also feel differently every day. Where some days you want to do one thing and other days you don't want to do it at all. And, you know, you are very lunar and you're connected to whatever the energies are of the moment of the day of the week. And what that Capricorn energy does is it grounds you and it gives you an overarching understanding of your priorities, of where you can put your energy that's reliable, and that it's okay to have the off days or even to perhaps want to take a break from interacting with people completely. But the Capricorn energy gives you strength. It also gives you a backbone. It gives you a sense of purpose and it can remind you of your own strength regardless of what is ebbing and flowing right now. So the higher octaves of Capricorn are supporting you by balancing out the emotional energies and also giving you a clearer objective to focus on for the long term. And that's supportive for Mercury and Cancer because again, on those off days when you don't want to get anything done, you have a long-term perspective uh, that allows you to move through your process without giving up on the goal. Mercury in Leo 
is a confident energy, a confident speaker, perhaps a public speaker. And in its lower octaves, it can be very focused on what you want. I want this. I want to create this. I want to do it my way. I want to do it this way. And the energy of Mercury and Leo in that lower octave can be unconsciously selfish or self-involved. It can be unaware of how it's coming across to other people. Uh, it can be aware, unaware of other people's needs. And so the opposite of Leo is Aquarius. And this is the energy of the group, the tribe, the collective, and an air sign that asks you to talk it out. And it could be that that Mercury and Leo needs to talk things out with a few people three people, four people. It needs to talk it out with groups of people. There needs to be something here about getting some feedback and understanding other perspectives that are different than yours. And this can actually help fuel your creative fire. And this is where you get those new inspirations. You get the new motivation is because that opposite sign of Aquarius wants to help you see a higher way of doing something, wants to help you with the road ahead, get you out of just this moment, this project, or this communication, and see what else is possible. Now, this is also the energy of understanding how words affect people and being responsible with your words, being clear in what you're saying and what you're putting out there so that you're received in the way that you want to be. Because that Mercury in Leo wants to be recognized. It wants to be noticed. It does enjoy center stage, but there is the need to understand how things come across and how it's perceived. And so that higher vantage point of Aquarius can give you that understanding, can give you a sense of, let me take some time to think about this, to think it through clearly, again, to talk it out with people and to maybe see something from a new angle or a higher perspective that you weren't aware of at first. And ultimately, all of that energy coming back to Mercury and Leo can make it even more confident and proud and even clearer in what it needs to say. So there is a lovely harmony here, as is the case between all opposite signs, but it does take balancing out something to help you connect to those opposite energies. Now, Mercury in Virgo is a problem solver and it wants to dig in to a problem and look at what's going on, the minutia, the details, the specifics. What is happening here that needs to be changed, improved, or healed? So Mercury in Virgo is very good with the puzzles, uh, the puzzles of our everyday life. And it's also wanting to perfect. And so there are times when this Mercury in Virgo can feel like it's not good enough. Uh, there can be guilt around where something isn't at its top expression. Why haven't I solved this? Why haven't I figured this out? Why isn't this running better? What else am I missing? Mercury in Virgo can see the little things that are wrong. It can be nitpicky and critical, not necessarily bad intentioned, but simply that's what the Mercury in Virgo eye catches. It sees the stains. It sees the messes. It sees where something can be better organized or be more efficient. And so that is the energy that Mercury in Virgo wants to focus on, but it can come across in another way at times. And so what the opposite sign of Pisces offers you is to step back, to basically zoom out, to zoom out from the details and minutia and to look at how the information makes people feel, to get out of the mind and the analytical bent of Mercury in Virgo and look at how it's making people feel, whether that's reading the room or understanding the client or getting into what the patient or customer is experiencing as you're discussing something. The Pisces energy is helping you with compassion, especially with yourself, especially where you're hard on yourself. If you have that guilt, worry, uh, perfectionism, you're, you want it to be good enough and you don't think it's good enough. Pisces says, be gentle with yourself. Allow some of those worries to just dissolve. You don't have to solve every problem. You don't have to be misfix it 
for everyone. And so that Pisces energy relaxes. It relaxes, it allows, it, it can be okay with the flow and the not knowing. Virgo loves a process. And Pisces says, what if there's no process and it's still gonna turn out perfectly and you are perfect. So the Pisces energy brings in acceptance and compassion and a lightness for where that Mercury and Virgo energy really wants to dig in and make it better, make it right, make it perfect. And the Pisces energy is gonna relieve you of that, especially if you have been carrying any martyr energy or if you've been self-sacrificing too much. That Pisces energy says that you need to take care of yourself. You can't save the world, you can't save everyone, but perhaps what you can do is just be kinder to yourself today. Mercury in Libra is the energy of connecting with people, of conversations and things that can be discussed at and shared. And the lower octave of Mercury in Libra is biting your tongue to keep the peace, being a people pleaser, saying what you know people want to hear instead of what they need to hear, uh, not really expressing what you truly think. And so the opposite of Libra is Aries. And this is the energy of understanding who you are and to represent yourself, to show up as yourself in your life, in relationships, and in your world energetically without having to overly compromise. That Mercury in Libra can give in if it doesn't have a strengthening of a backbone. It can keep talking and talking and talking without ever taking action or without ever making a decision. There can be analysis paralysis with Mercury and Libra, where you just want to keep a conversation going, uh, perhaps out of fear that you don't want to hurt feelings. You don't want to come across too strongly. You don't want to be not liked. Mercury and Libra wants to be liked, wants that win-win. So at those times when you're feeling and sensing that someone isn't perhaps in agreement with you, you want to go to the higher octave of Aries, which reminds you of your independence and of being yourself and to not compromise who you are for others because the right people will connect with you based on who you truly are. The people pleasing or the excessive comparison can also sink your energy. And the Aries energy reminds you that it's courageous to be who you are and that you can tap into that to see a situation in a different way and to look at what you want. What do you want and what do you need in a conversation, in a discussion, in a situation, in a relationship? What do you need? And to make sure you gain clarity on that so that you're not only about what someone else thinks or what they need, you're really clear on what matters to you. Aries will also help you make a decision and have you trust yourself, trust your gut, trust that immediate energy you're feeling about something and allow that to be incorporated into your decision-making process and to get out of your head and into the body because Aries is the body. So what messages are coming forth from your body? That gut response, where is the energy rising? Where are you excited? Where are you motivated? And this is gonna help you, again, get out of your thought processes, get out of your head and make a decision or make a priority that is clear for you and that is correct for you. Mercury in Scorpio can be very intuitive and tapped in to energies that others are not aware of. Mercury in Scorpio in its lower octave can be very aware of power dynamics and control. It can perceive others through this lens. It can be looking at what you need to get, what you want to get from others, uh, what matters to you that you perceive you don't have. And so again, these are the lower octaves of Scorpio that can be envious or jealous, that can be very focused on what others have. And so this is an energy that needs to be balanced with the strength of Taurus. And that Taurus energy is grounded and clear. It's aware of what works, what doesn't work, what's necessary, what's not necessary. Mercury in Scorpio can be overly passionate, uh, almost too much for some people, 
and it can be driven by some unconscious fears around loss, whether that is loss of a friendship, relationship, person, loss of a resource, money, finances, loss of something, loss of power, loss of control. It can be driven by these unconscious fears that can be very karmic. And so the Taurus energy is bringing you into the moment, bringing you into your physical reality, bringing you into your body and asking you to balance some of that intense emotion with the real world support, literally connecting with a tree or a plant or an earth element to feel clearer in your energy systems and in your priorities. The Mercury in Scorpio needs that clarity to be in this world and it can tap into also the abundance of the earth, the abundance of natural resources, the abundance of life, the abundance of living. Because one of the things that Scorpio can be focused on is accumulation uh, out of power or out of a fear. And then once that shifts or is transformed within you, you then start to tap into a lot of things that naturally flow to you almost magnetically. And Taurus is an abundant energy, but it's also very clear in what needs to be done. So if that Mercury in Scorpio is overwhelmed, it's feeling a lot of anxiety, a lot of fears, a lot of emotions, a lot of depression, the Taurus energy will help get you centered in the body, in the world, and give you simple steps to take because Taurus is about simplicity and Scorpio can be complicated and complex. So how can you take this more intense energy and just focus on two things a day? Or how can you make something in your world simple and start there or at least allow that to balance out anything that you're perceiving is more complex? Use the earth to support you and tap into how you are connected to all of the energies in the earth realms. Mercury in Sagittarius is a big thinker, a big talker, a big dreamer. This is where we use expletives and exaggerations. Uh, Mercury in Sagittarius likes things on a bigger scale. And that can mean it comes across in a grandiose manner. This can come across through ego. This can come across through overall energies. Remember, I'm talking about the lower octaves here, the lower octaves that we're not always aware of. Uh, this is often one who has big opinions, uh, big perspectives on world issues, on what's happening, uh, what is right, what is wrong. Mercury in Sagittarius can have unconscious judgments about what others should do or how one should live their life. And so when we have these lower energies of Mercury and Sagittarius that perhaps comes across like a know-it-all, you know, they've had every experience, they've done everything, they've read every book, they know every religion, you know, they've been to every country on the planet, they know all about the cultures. When there's too much of this, it can be balanced out with that Mercury or rather that Gemini energy that supports the Mercury thought process. Gemini is about staying open asking questions, not assuming you have all the information. And so Gemini supports this Mercury and Sag by saying, well, maybe there's more that I can understand here. What's the other side of the coin? What's the other way to see this that I haven't learned about yet? What questions can I ask? What specific questions can I ask to gather more information? And so this is where you can have conversations with people is through this Gemini energy of the back and forth exchange where you can talk about your opinions and your experiences, but stay open to those who are radically different or who can't relate or who have a different version of truth, a different version of what's happening in the world, a different version of anything and that that version is valid too. So the Gemini energy allows us to have these intellectual exchanges to understand more and to hear more stories. And if you can see it as everything is a story and it's not just your story, it's not just their story, there's unlimited stories in the universe that can help balance out 
some of the strong opinions or judgments that you have developed or learned along the way. So that would be a good keyword here is that the Gemini energy is helping you see all the multiple stories that coexist in the world and how those stories can be endlessly fascinating and a part of your ongoing growth. Mercury in Capricorn is often very business minded and focused on the job at hand. What needs to be taken care of? What needs to be managed? What am I responsible for? But the lower octaves of Mercury in Capricorn involve a coldness or a harshness. It can come across as being condescending. Uh, it can come across as the energy of someone who will do what they need to do on their own, um, even to the point of ostracizing themselves from others, almost like a Scrooge um, or someone who doesn't trust people, who, who doesn't want to work with others, who doesn't need relationships. Of course, I'm just giving you one example of how these energies can show up and the mental perceptions that we operate off of. So the opposite sign from Capricorn is cancer, which connects you to your heart and how you feel. And to make sure that you're not simply going about your responsibilities and goals in a cold-hearted manner, but that you're tapping into what is correct for you and how it makes others feel because others do perceive you in some manner. They see you, they watch you, and they could be aware of the energy you're putting out that maybe it's a little bit harsh at times, uh, perhaps even bullying. That's another archetype of Capricorn uh, where you don't understand how others are feeling you because that's not what you're tapped into. But this cancer energy drops you into your heart, drops you into more of your energy and opens you up to where you need support. Cancer will support you. Cancer is the people who want to be on your team, who want to be uh, working for you or who want to you know, perhaps even partner with you. This is the energy of how we connect with other people and we don't have to do it all alone. Cancer will show you more that you couldn't see on your own and it's going to help soften some of those rough edges. It's going to take you away from simply the day-to-day -day reality and the mountain you're climbing, so to speak, and give you a moment to stop and breathe deeply and connect to more of your energy, connect to more of your body. I even see this as a feminine energy where that Mercury in Capricorn maybe has been hardened by the realities of life or it's just very aware of what counts, you know, what matters, how to show up, what looks good, what is important. But that cancer energy that wants you to soften, it's like it takes you back to this energy of a younger girl and the innocence that she held and she possessed before she became so responsible or she became so self-resilient and had to be strong. There's something about these two archetypes of energies that remind you of what is in your heart and even how to nurture yourself as you're working, how to nurture and take care of yourself, that it's okay to have a day off. It's okay to give yourself a vacation and some downtime. You need that rest, perhaps even that alone time. Uh, you need to receive so that cancer energy can support the Mercury in Capricorn energies and help balance out where you're spending your time and energy every day to make sure that you're also making yourself a priority too. Mercury in Aquarius is a fascinating thinker. And this is where there are a lot of creative ideas, a lot of things happening in your mind, a lot of perhaps conversations and ideas and projects and people and just a lot swirling about that energizes you. It's exciting, especially if it's different, if it's new. Um, it, it wants to have a way to express itself. And so the energy of this sign of Mercury in Aquarius is that it can be very fixated on where it's going, on the people around you, on how it will affect people, on what matters, what doesn't matter, on um, even how things should happen in a way that you think is best. 
and Aquarius is a fixed sign. So it has a sense of this is how I want something to go. Uh, there can be an underlining control. There can be an underlining need to do it your own way that you don't want to share. You don't want others involved to a certain extent. It's that sense of I will be an individual. I will take this on and I will be very aware of all the moving pieces, all the moving parts. And that is a gift of Aquarius is that you're good with having multiple things happening at one time, all swirling around. But what happens is that sometimes you get so fixated on these perceptions, ideas, thoughts that they aren't all correct for you. And the opposite sign of Leo brings you back to what is energetically right for you and brings you back into your body, brings you back into where you feel energized, gets you out of your head because there is a lot happening in your mind all the time and yet you can be disconnected from what is really true for you. And so it's about dropping down into that sense of self, not who others want you to be, not who you think you need to be for them, but rather what's really truly in your sense of self. And this means you go into your solar plexus and you look at if that feels lit up and, and warm and energized or if it feels shut down and cold because the Aquarius energy, it does need the fire of life. And so you want to get out of your head and come into what is right for you. And it's almost like stopping the chatter with either yourself or with other people. How do I feel about this? What do I want? What is best for me? Where am I going? And how is this okay for my life purpose and my life direction? So you're, you're moving from all this external energy or too much swirling about, and you're dropping down into your body, into your solar plexus to look at what is true for you and to allow that to balance out everything that's going on and allow it to energize you as well. And now we have Mercury in Pisces. And Mercury in Pisces is very intuitive and sensitive. This is a very empathic energy where you pick up on what is not being said. You have a rich inner world, very creative, artistic. And this is where you can even be your own worst enemy. Remember, I'm focusing on the lower octave expressions. And in Pisces, it's where you can go into a sense of depression and discouragement, where you feel powerless and you can feel like a victim. Uh, this is where you can feel overwhelmed and tapped out, like you don't know what to do, you don't know what steps to take, you're just not feeling it, nothing is there. It's the sense of literally being in the ocean and you're just floating around and there isn't anything firm to hold on to. That Mercury in Pisces can sink low when it doesn't have a higher perspective that supports it. And this is often through a spiritual understanding or a connection to the universe that can support that Mercury in Pisces moving through its internal emotional process. So the opposite of Pisces is Virgo. And Virgo is going to give you reality checks. It's going to say, okay, today do these two things. You need to take care of the dog. You need to, you know, take a shower. You, you need to do the basics of life. And that Virgo energy is going to ground you and it's going to give you a sense of balance in what you can focus on and what you can do. In fact, that Virgo energy will help with a purpose, will help with an everyday habit or routine of how to go about using your energy. It will take the bigger feelings you have and basically give you a way to responsibly manage the energies. Virgo is really good at helping us heal, at helping us take care of ourselves, at helping us understand the pra practical realities of our daily life. And so when you feel like you're in that bubble just floating around and you don't know what to do, Virgo is going to help you make decisions. And it's going to say, okay, yes or no, you know, what do you need to do? Virgo is going to help you make a list of pros and cons. And that can be one thing that that Mercury and Pisces needs is just make a list of pros and cons for a situation. 
or make a list of the top three things that need to happen next. You know, you can have a very big vision, you can be very inspired and very artistic, and then it can all be overwhelming. So the Virgo energy says, okay, today you're gonna do one, two, three. Tomorrow, four, five, six, the next day, seven, eight, nine. So the Virgo energy is gonna put it into a process for you and help you see what you can work on, what you can focus on, and where you can direct your energy without getting lost in the abyss or feeling overwhelmed at times. So there we have it, all 12 astrological signs and their opposite energy. This podcast episode went a little bit longer, but I felt it was worth it in order to discuss each of the signs and their opposite energy. I hope this gave you some good things to think about. I do recommend that you understand more about the opposite sign in general. So if you have your Mercury in Pisces, yes, you can understand what Mercury in Virgo is, but you can also understand more about the Virgo energies and that will help you as well. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm grateful for your time. I hope this episode was interesting and supportive and also gave you some new ways to look at your astrology chart. Thank you so much for listening. As always, you can find me at mollymccord.online or over at ConsciousCoolChic.com. And I'll be back with another podcast episode soon as I release them every Wednesday and Monday. You can also find me on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you so much, and I will see you soon.